So let's build a battery for a giveaway, shall we? Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this episode we are going to build out this battery with these old valves we bought fairly cheap off Alibaba or AliExpress. We're going to build a battery around it and give it away to somebody. So let's just talk through the actual build. So I made these two ply in, simple 12 mil ply. You've got 300 mil thread bars with some plastic over the, the, the bar itself so it doesn't cut into the cells anyway, although these are quite substantially cladded. Using connector nuts, so we need two Allen keys to tighten them on. I've already prepared the top and the bottom and got our, our lugs for the balance leads and uh, the bars that the BMS will sit on. So in terms of the planning, just to go to sort of 101 basics, you need to construct your cell so that you're going, so let's say if we choose this as our main negative terminal and this as our main positive terminal, you're going to bridge these in series. I've got these flexible bus bars that we're going to use just because I can't find the original ones that came with the cells. That's fine. These will work quite nicely. Flexible strap between the two connectors and I put some heat shrink. This is non-adhesive heat shrink, so simply had a heat shrink that will protect them. So the, we need to just plan then. We've got these two bars that the BMS will sit on top of. I'm thinking of having it off-centered so that I can get to the bolts underneath. So once it's attached somewhat like that, you can then get to all of the bolts when these are in place. I'm going to use a JK BMS. So that is, should sit quite nicely on here. Uh, we'll probably place it smack bang in the middle like that, which means we're going to need to run a cable from here to here, and that should work fine. We just screw, we're going to drill carefully through the side here and drill and, and actually just screw this in. That's going to be the easiest. That should work absolutely fine. So I think that's good to go. Just need to take the excess wires off the balance leads because it comes with uh, ready for an 8S. We only need 4S, so we need to keep the first four and the last red. And these, all of these four reds, we can just put out and get rid of. So let's get on with it. Okay, so we have our balance lead ready to go and all the various cables. So this will be to go from the main negative onto the BMS and then from the main positive out. And uh, this is to go from the BMS out to our main negative. So I'm just going to tighten these up with the thread bars, get them nice and tight so they don't move. That should be good, nothing moves. That's cool. Right, let's get bus bars and balance leads on. And this come out at an angle like that to come back into the BMS with the balance lead I actually want inside. So it's set to about uh, five newton meters, which will be fine for this. The 
these are the temperature probes that go into the BMS. So I'm going to need to place two different places on the battery and tape them down so they get the temperature of the battery, of the cells that is. Before I mount the, the BMS onto these bars, I'm going to do one last Titan. Always uh, good to run through everything at least once again, if not twice, to make sure that you haven't left anything undone. If there are any that are finger tight by mistake that you haven't tightened up, you're going to have arcing, you can have all sorts of problems. So always a good idea to run through everything and do it in, a, in whatever logical sequence you'd like to work with, but just make sure you get to each one, you don't skip any out. That's it. They're all tightened. Now we're going to mount the BMS right over here. So the main negative will come in here. The, the one thing that you should note is that there are cables that run across each other and ideally you're going to want to put things like this into a conduit but if I tighten it like this that will not be making contact there. I'll move this out slightly so that there's no possibility of this making rubbing against this sharp edge here and making contact so that should work fine it's always important to note that the main positive coming out is not going to be touching on anything if i was using the battery i'd then fasten it to the side or something like that maybe even put a bus bar on the outside this one here we'll be able to take out either through the handle here or we'll be able to just take it out the side here quite easy moment of truth. Let's turn it on and see. When it does turn on. Right, we're done. Let's do a check through everything. Switch is in place, plugged in, temperature probes are in, balance leads are in. We've got our main uh, negative coming from the main negative terminal to the BMS and then R2, we're just going to leave this loose here now. And then the main positive uh, coming out from that terminal straight out there. So this is basically it. The bars are in place. Uh, we're just going to put the top and the bottom on, but I'll do that in a moment. So let's turn him on. That's the sound you want to hear. So it has come on and scan. So I've called this thing off grid free because we're giving it to somebody. Do some basic checks. Well, let's go and reset. So I'm going to settings, verify passcode one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's just choose life here four, which is going to reset everything to default values. And it is four cells. I can't actually remember how, what capacity these cells are. Let's just call it a hundred. They don't have very high capacity. Right, the cell over voltage protect reset, I'm going to change to 3.5. 
and the cell over voltage protect, I'm going to change to 3.55. Reason for the 3.55, that corresponds to Victron's default of 14.2 volts. The other thing to change then is the uh, continued charge current. I'm going to make this 50, just because we don't know. Could probably take a bit more, but let's say it's 50. And then the continuous discharge, continuous discharge, I'm going to make that 100 amps. That's governed partly by the size of the cable we have over here. Two more settings to change. So the uh, under temperature protect reset, I'm going to change that five degrees and the under temperature protect I'm going to change that to two degrees centigrade. What that means is when it drops down to two degrees centigrade charging will be discontinued. It'll, it'll stop charging until it reaches five degrees centigrade. So it gives enough time for the cells inside to warm up. Bear in mind we have two temperature probes that are on the top of the cell so that should keep them nice and safe. We go to the control, turn both of those on and come back there. That's cool. That's looking good. 14.09 volts. So this is pretty full. I'm going to just connect some leads onto here, onto a charger, just to make sure that it actually does accept a charge. Right, let's see if it accepts charge. And according to this, these are fully, fully charged. We probably charged them up when we left them last time. That's cool. So they're fully charged now. Let's turn this off and the last thing we will do is put the bottom and the top on. Disconnect that. Disconnect that. Just to be safe, we'll turn it off. So in this battery, we've got these four cells. Uh, these are sort of Winston wannabes. Uh, these were fairly inexpensive, inexpensive cells that we bought off AliExpress or Alibaba. They're quite big. Structurally, they're quite good, but they don't, don't have that much capacity. And for that matter, I can't even remember what the capacity of these are meant to be. Somewhere around 200. Uh, somewhere around 200. And um, so we've got the four four cells put in series with some uh, flexible bus bars. It just happened to be the bus bars that we had. Normally you wouldn't need flexible, but it's quite nice having these flexible bus bars. We've got a JK BMS 4 to 8 S. We've taken all four of the leads. So we got this structured as a 4 S. We've used a 16 mil cable coming off the main negative on the other side, coming to the BMS, and then again a 16 mil cable coming off there. That's good for sort of 100 amps. That should be fine. And two temperature probes coming off the, the BMS and put sort of there and there halfway through. So we should get a fairly good indication of the battery or the cell temperature so we can prevent damage if they're charged below freezing. And uh, the on switch on the side here so that you press that once and that turns it on and if you want to turn it off you just hold it for I think it's five or six seconds that goes off and yeah there you have it the we've left the main positive free here I mean normally for shipping we would totally close this off with some insulation tape and here's the main negative on this side we have the uh, the main positive we have the main negative quite difficult for them to touch each other done that deliberately and we probably just tuck this away for now just to keep it safe and sound so it's not going to touch on anything but yeah that's you might want to put a side on just to close it off completely to stop anything damaging it but these are fairly robust very good structurally these cells so yeah uh, held together with these 300 mil thread bars with connector nuts on either end and a plastic sheath just to make sure that we don't have metal that's going to damage the cells normally we have cells with, with a lot thinner walls and it's important to have these so that you don't have the thread cutting into the cell and touching there so there we have it completed battery a nice uh, bottom and top it's quite a tall battery so limited as to places it might fit but uh, nonetheless it's good to go it's got a nice uh, switch over here to so turn it on and off and uh, we're good to go check in the uh, 
description below because there is a link that uh, if you go and register there, uh, you'll be in for, for the draw for this battery. And uh, if you click on that, there'll be full instructions on what to do to enter the draw. So thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you in the next episode.